In the past year in Ukraine, I've seen every helmet and body armor I've ever reviewed in use. There is no universal standard on either side, only generalizations of common types, as well as many strange armor antidotes that people have begged me to comment on, however relevant to the war those may be. So I'll talk about a few of those, starting with the most interesting one. There have been numerous verified cases of Ratnik plates marked as dummy, actually containing ceramic, as well as a case of a plate that allegedly was recovered from a dead Russian soldier containing white plastic inside. Here's a verified example of the dummy marked plate stopping bullets. One of these dummies was able to stop an 8mm rifle round. I received some dummy plates as well, but found that mine didn't contain any ceramic. Mine did, however, contain a thin layer of Kevlar. Compare this to the alleged fake plate labeled as a legitimate one. It's curious for a couple of reasons. It's got a white polymer layer inside, as well as a few layers of Kevlar fiber. My replica didn't have this white layer, and the imposter plate is for sure not ceramic, because aside from the fact that the plate failed, the Russian ceramic is supposed to be dark red. From what I can tell, the imposter plate is a factory plate, or a highly detailed fake. The labels are all correct, and the rubber has the same patterns. According to the source, the plate is only bulletproof at the top, but even after asking the guy, I was never able to get a follow-up of more details. These plates are pretty dang hard to disassemble, and producing a fake plate with the proper air it is pretty unlikely. So what's going on here? Sadly, I can't get any clear answers. It may have been produced for display at a trade show, or a prototype that somehow got mixed in. The yellow serial number could help figure this out, but I can't fucking read it. The post also doesn't show the actual exit of the round aside from this tiny tuft of air mid at the top of the rear image. If anyone is able to follow up with some more details, I'll make a quick successor video. As far as the dummy plates containing any real ceramic, my guess is that these are reject plates that ended up out of spec for one way or another and have been resold as training plates, similar to old broken sappy plates when they fail inspection. As a whole, the granite plates in the 6B45 system is a proven NIJ level 4 body armor system that I tested in detail in another video, link in the description. Russian soldiers equipped with Ratnik armor have comprehensive protection on par of Western militaries, and most of the Russian army is actually equipped with it, despite what you might read on Twitter. On the topic of well-made fakes, MOS manufacturer recently sent me an ENL Airsoft AKSU that I thought I'd compare with my own carbine. ENL makes some pretty good replicas, they've got good weight, and they actually can rust, plus there's some accessory compatibility. My original lower handguards fit in nicely. For a lot of other modifications, there is some force required. Like Zeneco grips will need to be shaved down and shimmed, as to fit them on real rifles, you're supposed to mallet them in. Probably not a good idea of an airsoft gun, but it is cheap for an air gun at 255 bucks, so you, you might as well. The gun comes with a replacement booster to replace the ugly orange plastic one, though I've heard it may not come with it depending on your locality's laws. The gun is a solid, conveniently sized, and consistently performing airsoft gun from a company that has been making and improving on them for over a decade now. You can find their air gats and more directly on MOS's website under distributors. Link in the description. Getting back into it, the crown of the Ratnik system, the 6B47 helmet, is also seen here getting caved in by a fist. The 6B47 has no binding agent and is just simple Kevlar weave. This is to reduce weight and make it float. The lack of binding makes it weaker than other Kevlar helmets, though no Kevlar helmet should be used for any blunt force application as they'll all break down. The helmet will still stop shrapnel in some pistol rounds. Although from my own examination and Mike's, it is indeed pretty weak at NIJ level 2. Not much to see there. The Donetsk and Luhansk militias are not equipped usually with Ratnik and have scrounged up whatever surplus they can find, including old Mosins and Chechen war era armor, like this MBO pistol rated vest. When I say that, I've seen every armor tested on the channel in this war, it's usually because of these militias. They're not indicative of the Russian military as a whole. That doesn't mean the Russian military isn't also short on protective equipment, like this example of Iranian ceramic body armor and helmets turning up in Russian use last November. I'll test them when I get my hands on them. The Kolpak 20 helmet is another interesting case. It is an old Soviet SSH-68 steel helmet being reinforced with new liners in Kevlar, forming a composite helmet. This is the same concept as the 6B14 helmet I tested on this channel. That 6B14 had respectable results, 
exceeding the protection of an American ACH at the expense of being a pound heavier and unable to easily mount night vision. And that's all that's interesting. I would say that a big thing about it all is don't believe anything at face value. There's a lot of unverifiable propaganda and bullshit out there that makes people believe they're seeing trends. More interesting tests and videos to follow.